Welcome. Welcome, everybody, to the Wednesday Agent Attraction Mastermind, normally hosted by Sean Kokoska, but I'm filling in today. My name is Sean Policino, and I apologize. I'm coming in here just on the fly. I have no clue what we're supposed to be doing here today. So I know we're interviewing Dennis D'Souza, who is a rock star uh, in the real estate world today. And uh, Dennis, I'm going to turn it over to you and, and try to help facilitate some questions from the group. If anybody has questions, please raise your little yellow hand there on um, on uh, the Zoom control panel there, or just speak up and, and, and uh, I'm sure Dennis will let you know whether it's okay to interrupt him or save those questions till the end. Dennis, go for it. Sure, sure. And also, hey guys, nice to see you all. I know a bunch of faces on here. Brian Moses is also on this call, Sean. He's the guy with the Tony Robbins hat, the little clerk, the raising his hand right there. So Brian, him and I are Brian, all welcome. All together. Perfect. So Brian, go ahead and un unmute yourself there. And you guys hey, everybody. Great to be here. Thanks for having us. So, um, so, so Brian's been my personal coach for 15 years. Sean's my personal coach now. So, you know, what, one tip I can give all of you fuck guys is, you know, pay, pay for coaching. I mean, it helps, it helps your real estate career, it helps your attraction. Um, just, just do it right. Don't be, this is a business that we're in, invest in it. That's, that's great. And Sean's been my coach as well. He's my sponsor here at, at EXP and, and uh, I've been coaching with him since 2012 and, you know, I don't care if you're Tom Brady, uh, you know, John Maxwell, we all have coaches, right? I mean, just the, the higher level of business you're doing, the higher level of coaching you get to afford. And um, he's poured into our lives and it's great to be able to continue to do that with him. So go ahead, Dennis. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Brian, you want to jump in there and say a few things and we'll just get rolling with the whole. Yeah, yeah sure. Well, so this is about age and attraction and uh, in preparation for the call, uh, Dennis is my sponsor. We, uh, one thing that we do is we collaborate weekly to give you some tips. So you should collaborate with your sponsor on a weekly basis. And that's W E E K, not W E A K, right? Weekly in terms of time schedule. Um, and we brainstorm and collaborate and hold each other accountable. And our, our goals, our per personal goals are to build a monster revenue share. So I think that you need to have goals in terms of what you want your revenue share to look like in five years, looking out into the future. It doesn't happen overnight. And then once you have goals, you start thinking about those goals and your actions start to catch up with those goals. And you do things that are bringing you towards that end result. Um, you know, one thing I, in preparation for today's call, I think the hardest thing for us experienced agents to do is to be vulnerable enough to make mistakes. Um, you know, many of the people on today's call have had successful real estate careers in sales and not really had a lot of great experience in recruiting. And that's a new thing and new things create change and they create discomfort. But I would encourage everybody to fail it forward. And, you know, I work on my craft every week I schedule time in my calendar to practice. Um, I script out great one-liners when I hear them. I write them down. I put them in a document. I review them. I rehearse them so that it becomes unconsciously competent. Um, so those are a couple of the tips. One more thing I wanted to share, Dennis, is that, you know, I watch people in our organization reach out to agents and we have group calls and we discuss so what you say and one of the common pieces of coaching feedback that I give them is you're prescribing before diagnosing and in the medical profession we've often heard prescription before diagnosis is malpractice so I would before we start pitching and spewing exp and all the great things that we're excited about I would I would diagnose you know How's it going at your current company would be the first question that I would ask. How's it going over there at ABC XYZ? Oh, it's going great. Yeah, it's going all right. Doesn't matter what they say. Take an interest in other people. Good things happen when you take an interest in other people. How's it going? It's going good. What do you love about your company? What else do you love about your company? Right. 
What else do you love about your company? Oh, that's fantastic. Because if you know what they love about their company, how many of us know that EXP can replace and equal or surpass what they love about their company? Absolutely. So we need, we need to know what their hot buttons are. And in marketing, that's called message to market match so that you're speaking the language that they want to hear. Everybody listens to one radio station, WIFM, what's in it for me? So you want to get that information. What do they like about the company? Get three of them. You know, if you had a magic wand and you could change anything about your company, I'm curious, what would it be? What else would you change? And now you know what their pain points are. And that sets up the opportunity to introduce your upline or a three-way call. Hey, if there was an opportunity for you to keep what you currently love and to get what you currently hate or replace what you currently hate or fix what you currently don't like, would you be open to a discussion? I'm not leaving my company. I didn't ask you to leave your company. I asked you if you'd be open to a discussion. I got this guy, Dennis D'Souza. He's a badass real estate agent in San, uh, San Diego. The guy's incredible. You know, he's got a really busy schedule, but I bet you I could twist his arm and get him on a Zoom call for 30 minutes. I bet you you'd learn a lot. Would you be open to that? And, you know, so that's just kind of a, just a couple of down and dirty little nuggets that I hope will serve everybody, Dennis. Hey, Brian and Dennis, if you could maybe share with the group a little bit about where you're from. I apologize for my, my sake, too. I don't, I'm don't. i not really sure where you guys are. You sound like you're from Boston, Brian. Is that true? I'm about 40 miles north of Boston. I'm, I, I, I thought you were going to ask Mississippi. I often get confused with Mississippi or Alabama, but yeah, I'm in New Hampshire. I'm born and raised Bostonian, so uh, I could hear it in your voice. Love we're it. Both, we're both fellow mass holes. You have to explain to everybody what that means. Where, where are you from, Sean? I was born in Easton, uh, raised in Brockton, but I lived from Shut up. pretty much. Dude, I'm from Brockton, man. Okay. I was on the North End. No, so was I. Oh, my God. I'm about I went, to, I, went to North, I went to North Junior High. So did I. So did oh, I. Wait, how old are you? 51. I'm 54, 55. So, gosh, we, we just missed each other, right? Right behind you. Yeah, exactly. You're right off, right off of Belair Street. Yep. We'll so, have to connect afterwards, wow. but maybe share a little bit about what kind of results you're getting. I mean, I, you know, I coach some agents on attraction, and I think the hardest, the first strategy that I try to get them to implement is just an outbound call strategy. I mean, we all, as real estate agents, we I, I assume we call uh, buyers, sellers, and investors, and really flipping that around and calling, you know, agents and just getting into conversation, and then being able to employ you know, deploy what you were talking about, Brian, an actual strategy around the questions you ask, but maybe share with the group some results that you're getting, who you're calling, where you're calling, or maybe other strategies. If you're not using a calling strategy, what are you using? So, so Brian and I discuss this quite a bit and um, Betty Gales is on here. So there's a few, few folks that I know pretty intimately here. You know, what, what we want to do right off the bat guys is when you, we probably have some new agents here. You want to get a big list, right? You've probably heard it before. Brent Gove talks about it. Get your notepad, write down everybody you have. Go through your phone, go through your phone, go through your email. I'm, you know, several years later, I'm still finding people that I'm like, holy crap, I forgot about that person, right? So your list is always evolving. So, and, um, you know, what Brian, Brian's a very influential guy. He was Craig Proctor's right hand man on stage for a decade. Um, he knows a lot of agents, right? So he's prioritizing the whales up front, okay? So, you know, raise the most influential people to the top. I was fortunate enough when I started at EXP to really, really dive in and go after the big people. Why would I go after somebody that's not a whale if I can go after a whale? So, right. you know, so so some of my, you know, to be honest, I have five, 1,550 people in my group and that the majority of that is within three people and Brian's one of them. So, um, you know, there, there's a couple of people in my group, and I think you'll see that as a common trend is that everybody that has a really big, you know, EXP re revenue share group, they all have one or two people that's really the powerhouse in their whole tribe. So, you know, I encourage everybody to get, get your list, try to go after the most influential first. Don't be afraid of it. They've all been attacked by multiple people. You just have to have a better approach. You know, these calls that Sean has every single week, I mean, just listen to somebody, Sean Sturrock, I think that was last week, 
gosh, that was that was one of the best calls I've ever heard. I mean, you know, dig into these calls and really just Brian Moses taught me this, you know, just don't just listen to it, transcribe the friggin' webinar. Spend the time. Brian, Brian transcribes everything. When he's here, here's something that's impactful, he writes it down. So what does that do? That just drills it into your brain, right? Right. So, so you know, that's that's one tip I can give you. Um, you know, listen to these calls, they're all good. Everybody, what you'll notice, it has a different way of approaching it, right? You know, um, <clears throat> well, I'm not gonna mention names. One of one of the big people in my group, he's a good friend of mine. Um, and you know, I went right at him with the opportunity because I know he's a smart business guy and he would he would take it in. Most of the people you don't want to go right in for the for the kill, you know? It's like, dude, listen to this. This thing, it will change your life. I couldn't sleep last night. My buddy Mitch Ribak told me about it in Beverly Hills and like my head's spinning and you're an influential guy. This is a no brainer. And he signed up within, you know, a week or two. So for, for the majority of people, guys, you don't want to go at it like that. If you know somebody personally that they have trust in you, then you can go at them pretty hard and just, just you know, throw the opportunity at them, if that makes sense. Sure. How many people in your organization today, Dennis? Um, right around 1550. Okay. And so think back to the beginning. Did you just, did you just blindly, because you were coaching with Sean, pick up the phone and start calling those whales and calling those people that were on your list? Is that what you did? Yeah, I mean... So, so, you know, I wasn't coaching with Sean back then, um, okay. but yeah, I was, I reached out to the people that I knew, right? So we're all going to reach out to the people we know personally, and we have relationships with first, right? That's the easiest way to do it. Betty Gales is on here. She was one of my very first, number one or number two recruits that I've ever recruited to the company years ago. So, you know, I knew Betty, I helped, I helped coach her for a little while and, um, yeah. So, you know, it's, it's the ones you have a personal relationship are the easiest ones to bring over. Right. Yeah. Well, so, why do you think, why do you think it is that out of uh, all the agents at EXP today, you know, we all think probably, I mean, I thought the number one reason why most agents would come to EXP was because of the rep share, but 12% um, of the agents have downline, which means that many of us are not, you know, not calling agents and, and talking to them about the opportunity why do you think that is well i mean you know I, I, pe people don't join a real estate nobody put it this way nobody ever went to get their real estate license to be a recruiter right right to get their real estate license to sell houses so you always have to leave with production so um i'll tell you what what my organization mitch ribak myself what we do um is we have weekly calls we have a thursday mastermind and, you know, we have 100 and 150 people show up. And what we do is we tell, we show our downline to introduce people to this mastermind. It's just strictly production based. We have some of the top agents and, we, you know, we have the number one and number two individual last year, um, EXP individual agents on there every single week. And we just share, we do a round robin. We have 10 top agents around the country and we just share our ideas about production, strictly about production. We don't talk about EXP. We don't mention it. You know, that's a strict rule for, for the, for the panelists. It's like, you don't talk EXP at all, right. like at all. This is brand agnostic. This is strictly production. And we're going off of that base We're we're not, you know, we, we just want people to come learn and we want to build that relationship with them, give them massive value. And then eventually they're going to, have a falling out with their brokerage and they're going to come over. I'll give you a prime example. You know, people don't come over right away, guys. I have um, one of my old realtors in Florida that I bought investment property. So I've been working on this guy for three years, very hands off, just peppering them little by little. Big falling out with his brokerage yesterday, calls me up. He's like, dude, I just quit my brokerage. My broker pissed me off so bad. I'm coming over. So he's onboarding today. So, you know, this is always a process, guys. The fortunes and the follow up. You know, you'll talk to people two years ago. They'll be joining today, possibly. So don't don't give up on people. Yeah, if you're calling, if you're calling new agents, you're going to get, and you know, you might find somebody in there that's a builder. But if you're calling people that are <clears throat> established real estate professionals that <clears throat> have used some leverage in their business, or have teams, or have small, you know, a small brokerage, you're going to get obviously find people that want to build as well alongside you. So I think it definitely matters who you're calling and, um, you know, calling the ones with the production is, is definitely a good way to go. Uh, it brought, where does Brian fit in your organization out of the 1550 is in your first level? Yeah, Brian, Brian's my first level. 
Okay. I'm very lucky, very lucky to get him. So he had he had blind faith in me. Thanks, Brian. Because Brian was being attacked literally by every single big name that you know in EXP. So I love Dennis and I'm grateful to have him as my sponsor. He's uh become a really, really great friend. And you know, he he pours into me. I'm a I'm very, very busy. I've got a coaching business and I've got a family and I travel for my son's college football games. And Dennis really helps. I'll tee him up, get him interested. And Dennis helps me. He, he really partners with me. He really understands the value of partnership and teamwork. Sean, I want to offer, as Dennis was talking, it got me thinking about a really easy way for all of these agents to reach out to people. And, you know, you miss 100% of the shots you don't take. So make a list, as Dennis, Dennis says, prioritize that list. And then here would be, here would be a, a suggestive type of introduction. Hey, Sean, I know you've probably been approached by people at EXP uh, left and right. Is that happening? Um, yeah, I get calls. I don't know if I get too many from EXP, but maybe a few. Yeah, and you probably never will uh, switch companies, but if you ever weren't happy or you, anything ever changed, would you keep me in mind? Would you reach out to me? I've been here for a couple of years and it's really been great. And I don't want to be one of those people that just spoo all over you. If you're happy where you are, great. But you need everybody, you need to let people know you're at this company. You, you know, we don't want to be a secret agent for recruiting. Right. So that's, a, that's another suggestion. And then Dennis has a great one because now he's been at EXP for four or five years and people go, hey, Dennis, how, how is it going? Well, you know, tell me about EXP. And Dennis won't tell him about EXP. What's your line, Dennis, when someone says, hey, you know, how's it going at EXP? Can you tell me more? Yeah, I mean, it, it's a great company, but I don't want to talk about EXP. Let's, how, how's business going for you? Let's, let's focus on that. Just, just flip it on them. You know, I mean, it's, it's kind of like dating guys, right? If you sit there and chase this, you know, guy chasing a girl, whatever you're doing. So you're chasing them, chasing them, chasing them. What do they do? They pull away, right? And then if you chase them harder, they run, they don't walk anymore. So don't, don't do that. Right. Just flip it. Just to, totally don't. I want to talk about EXP. I don't, you know, let's not talk about that. Well, let's, let's do what? I have some questions. Let's talk about it later. So let's talk about some other. How's business going for you? And, you know, eventually they're going to be pissed off and they're going to chase you down and ask you questions. I mean, you basically reverse sell them, right? I mean, it's it, it works really awesome. well. I agree with that. And I, I see a few questions about some of the scripts that in the chat box there. I'm just trying to read the chat. Tim, you could, if you could help me as well, if there's some, if there's some specific questions in there which we're talking here about some of the scripts and dialogues, it's not a magic phrase. It's, it's more so the structure and how you say it. We've all heard Sean use the ABC, action, benefit, commitment. So tell them what you'd want. Tell them what you'd like them to do. Hey, let's set, you know, I understand you're happy where you're at. Let's set an appointment <clears throat> to where you can at least, at least take a look at the model and do a deep dive on it. And let me, let me share with you some of the things that I discovered and you go into a benefit, tell them a story about a benefit that they're going to receive and then ask them for the commitment again. Um, is that, you know, how, how, explain to me, guys, how that works for you as far as what do you feel the structure you're, you know, you're sharing with us, Dennis, that you don't really, you hold back and you don't really talk about EXP. You pour into them about real estate. How, how many calls do you have to make like that before you finally talk to them about the, about setting the appointment? Yeah, I mean, it's hard, you know, like Sean talks about, it's really, really hard not to talk about EXP, right? I mean, it's it's changed my life. It's changing Brian's life. It's changing a lot of our lives. So, I mean, it takes courage, really, to not, not to spew it, not to EXP on people, right? So, um, you really have to be, you know, like, like Sean talks about, you have to really be conscious about not not speaking when you're, you know, when, when you feel like you're, you want to speak about EXP, if that makes sense, you know, you want to, you want to really pull it back, you know, so, so as far as calls, I mean, hey, I'm, I'm the first to admit that I, I slack on my calls. And that's why Sean, I hired Sean as my coach to crack the whip on me a little bit, because I'm not, I'm not doing what I need to be doing every day. Right. So, 
you know, that's the thing. And we all, and we all struggle, I think, a little bit with our frontline, right? We all need to get frontline agents. And um, I think that's the whole trick, right? It's so, so I really focused you guys for, you know, the several years is to grow it deep, you know, not, not wide frontline, but grow it deep. The frontline comes here and there. I'm not really pushing hard at that, but I'm supporting Brian Moses. Brian Moses will throw a three-way calls on me. He needs questions. I pick up the phone when he calls. He texts me. I pick up the phone. I mean, it's almost like I'm an employee for my downline right now. Um, we, my team still sells homes. I still sell, <clears throat> you know, I might sell three houses a year personally. That's about it. Mm -hmm. You know, my, my, my nine to five now, and more than that is just three-way calls every day. I do two to three of them a day. So that's, that's my goal is I'm building this. This is my business, you know, outside of my business. And I'll tell you, it's fun as hell. You know, EXP breathes new life. I've been doing real estate for almost 30 years and, you know, it gets mundane after a while. So yeah, it I mean, really changed, changed it for me. So think about it. We have to recruit buyers and sellers to work with us. What's the difference in recruiting agents to work with us? <laughs> I mean, like, like Brent, we had Brent go on our, our attraction mastermind, me, Mitch and Pete Middleton. We had him on yesterday and, you know, Brent's always talking about the long game, right? <clears throat> you know, do you want to, do you want to do the short game? The short game is, you know, and, and, you know, don't get me wrong. We all have to make money. We all have to survive. Some people are coaches. Some people sell houses. We need to pay our bills, but, you know, Brent talks about once you get a certain amount of, you know, rev share coming in, play the long game. Don't, don't list a house, list an agent. That right. agent can turn into a hundred houses, a hundred listings. Right. That one listing is not going to turn into another listing, almost guaranteed. So, are you using any other strategies, guys, other than outbound calls? Events. events. So, so okay. I do events. I do events for my downline because I'm a real estate coach and a trainer. We use topics that are appeal to agents about production, increasing their production, generating better quality leads, you know, listing presentation, best practices. And we'll do an event. Uh, I've done one in Seattle this past year, Cincinnati, Ohio, New Hampshire, Cape Cod, Massachusetts. So we, you know, I'm going out to events, not charging for events, but getting the sponsors to cover the costs of the events. And actually, contribute towards a speaking fee that my my local person in Cincinnati or Seattle can keep. So there, you know, it's like I'm a paid assassin is the way that I look at it. Um, I want to go in and help them build their group. And you can go one to one or you can go one to many. So we do events and we get 50, 75, 100 people to come to an, an event that are in my organization. And everybody that comes to that event is their opportunity to put on their front line, which would be on my second, third, or fourth level. Right. Okay. How many in your group today, Brian? I have uh, 220. Okay. Yeah. And Brian, Brian's really just starting to pick up the pace now, so he's pretty pretty excited. My revenue share, though, is is significantly greater than other people who have 220 because I have intentionally and purposefully directed my efforts per Dennis's suggestion on whales, on people that are producers, icon agents. You know, I have a lot of icon agents on my front two lines. So you're going to make 2,800 or cappers. Right. Um, but if you have an icon agent, not only are they going to cap, they're going to recruit. So right. they're influencers. They get it. They're business people. So I have a lot of people on my front two lines that are building my organization. So it's really starting to grow very rapidly and um, maximizing all of the revenue share. Yeah. And so where are you guys getting the phone numbers? Are you guys, because obviously you're, you're talking about other cities. So you're going outside of the, outside of your where you live and where you do do your real estate business. Um, Dennis, I'm not sure if you do that as well. Do, where do you get your data? Do you just put it in a simple list and, and call from it? Yeah, you know, I mean, I, I've been around the block for a while. So I have I have a list of hundreds of agents that I know personally. So around the country. And, you know, I'm, I'm digging in little by little into that list. And I still haven't tapped into the full list, to be honest. Um, you know, I don't, I don't want to speak for Brian, but Brian has, gosh, I mean, <clears throat> he has 20,000 people that know him, at least. 
you know, just, just from his coaching, being on stage in front of every single, you know, event that you've ever heard of. So, um, yeah, I'm not, I'm not digging into, um, brand new people yet, and I will get there eventually. You know, one, one of the things I do guys is I do a LinkedIn strategy and I could talk about that a little bit, Sean, if sure. you like. So, um, what, what I do is I, I go after, whenever I hear about a new country coming online, sometimes you'll catch wind of Poland, for instance, coming online. I have a virtual assistant in Costa Rica. And what she does is she makes connections with agents in Poland ahead of us opening Poland and just saying, hey, are the company I work with is coming into your country, basically. And I'd love to, it sounds like it could be a good opportunity for you. I read your profile. Um, I'd love to connect with you. So and then if they connect with me, my virtual assistant sends a follow-up message after that. And then if they respond to the second message she sends out, then I get involved. So um, I'll give you an example. I got um, my friend Nuno from Lisbon, Portugal, joined about a year and a half ago. I think he has 35 people in his group now. He has people in Spain, Portugal, and he has 20 people in Brazil that I haven't even met. So talk about leverage, right? Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. So, so that's one of the techniques, you know, so you could use LinkedIn. I mean, the, the whole point, guys, is you have to be active. <clears throat> Brian and I talk about this all the time. It's like when you, when you work and you're showing the effort, the universe rewards you yeah. with, with, with gifts handed to you. So if you sit on your ass on a couch complaining and scared of picking up the phone, guess what? The universe isn't going to hand you anybody. Right. If you're putting in a work and you're calling and you're texting and you're emailing and you're doing LinkedIn and you're doing this and you're doing that, all of a sudden things start getting busier and you might get a gift handed to you. An agent calls you out of the blue. Hey, I saw you with the XP. I'm thinking about joining. Can we talk about it? That will happen. Right. Well, I think you're talking about just using if you get LinkedIn premier or premium, uh, you get sales navigator. Sales navigator allows you to search people by industry they work or company that they work for, just like you do an MLS search of property, you can do that at LinkedIn. And that gives you people to call that are working for Compass or are working in a certain industry in that live in Portugal or wherever you're able to make those searches. I use Zillow. Zillow go to at the top on the left, my agent, you know, agent finder put in the city. Okay. I started calling people in Easton recently uh, cause that's where I'm from. And I just figured, Hey, I could use some, you know, some relativity plus I, I have family there. So I'd love to have a business there. So I'm calling people in, in Easton, but, um, it, it tells you what, you know, how many Zillow reviews they have, how many homes they've sold. So you've got data there to make sure that you're calling a whale like Dennis is referring to. So that's a really simple strategy you could use to call people. Absolutely. Yeah. Zillow, Zillow's great. You can see everything they do, you know, and again, it's just, we can all do that, right? That's just, you know, managerial yeah. work. It's fine as Zillow people. The courage is picking up the phone. Right. You have, to, you, have to be great. you have to be courageous. Sure. Who was that that just spoke up? And I see, John, you've got your hand is up as well. Brian, go so ahead. I was going to, Sean just did a video uh, that was brilliant and he talked about your why and he, um, it was really a great video. He talked about, you know, if you want a 70 story building and there was a two by 12 going across the street to the next 70 story building, yeah. would you walk yeah. across the two by four for $10,000? And most people would probably say no, but if you're gutsy enough to say yes, Sean threw in, well, it's nighttime, it's raining and it's windy. Right. So you probably won't go. However, if your children were on the other side of the on, on the other side of the two by four on the other rooftop and the building was burning, would you go? Yeah. So if your yeah. why is strong enough, you'll make the calls. Right. My why, Dennis's why, Sean's why is big enough. And I just was trying to think about a metaphor that I could share with the group to increase your why. Because if you increase your why, you'll do You'll move forward. You won't be a like I want. I'm, I'll risk my life to save my kids. You'll you you'll risk rejection to get to where you want to go. So here's what I wrote down. I want everybody to take calculate how much income you have earned in your lifetime in real estate or in your career. So from the time you graduated college or get out of high school, calculate your income. So in my case, 
I graduated, I'm an old man. You know, I've been doing this for 30 years. Mm. I've made a lot of money. And the more that we make, how many of us know the more we spend? Absolutely. So I want you to take all the money, everybody come up with a dollar amount of what you've earned over the last X years of your adult life. So I'll give you an example. If you did $500,000 in income for 20 years, you made $10 million. If you never spent it and you were able to keep it all and somehow live off your parents and never have to buy food or travel or invest in your business, if you kept all $10 million, if you kept every penny that you earned, at retirement, you'd earn 3.6% annually on your money. So 360,000 on $10 million. You can do that at EXP in a couple of years. Yes. So I've spent 30 years of my life building my little world, my little private personal empire. And in two <coughs> years at EXP, I'm earning the equivalent of all the money I've earned over the last 30 years. That's so I'll finish the why story. Are you willing to sacrifice this much of your life for the next three to five years so that you can live the remainder of your life absolutely financially free? Yeah. And if the answer is no, then that's fine. It's not, you know, that's not your M M O. My sister, my younger sister, Sean, used to say, hey, Brian, there's more to life than money. And I go, yeah, little sis, why is it that you're always asking me to borrow some though? <laughs> right? I, I agree there's more to life than money, but it certainly helps. And if money can solve your problems, you don't have any problems. So uh, <coughs> I'm very grateful to Dennis, to Glenn Sanford, to Sean Kokoska, to Brent Gove, to Mike and J Mike Reese, Jay Kinder, Al Stasek, uh, all the people at this company who just pour into me and they're not even into my organization. Be resourceful. No excuses. That's awesome. That was great. John, do you have a question? <clears throat> Actually, just more of a comment. I had saw I had seen uh, a bunch of people in the chat asking where you can get contact information. Uh, there's data sources out there that are great. I use MarketView Broker a lot. I'm, I'm piloting another um, data source. But with MarketView Broker, I have the Bright MLS, which is seven states. And right. I just brought on the FMLS, which is three states. I have almost 300,000 agents in my database now. About 100,000 are cappers. I don't search for agents, guys. I just sort through agents. That's yeah. all I do. And if you can switch from searching to sorting, it doesn't matter how many no's you get because we all know that the, the data says roughly 30% of agents are considering a brokerage move at any given point in any year. Right. And so you switch from sort uh, from searching for agents, it, it streamlines your whole world. You're not chasing anybody down. I'm just sorting for, through agents and I'm looking for agents who are looking for something better. And I tell you, I probably have about a 70% 70 70 conversion rate um, on cold call to first appointment booked. Uh, and it's it's with the right scripting. I mean, if you've ever done expires and fizzbills, and I used to do them at a high level in multiple states, like 500 dials a day. Yeah. Gosh, this is easier. Oh, if you do an hour or two of dialing a day, you could literally build a $200,000 income in six to 12 months. Yeah, if you only go after capping agents. And what kind of results are you getting? What's your group size today, John? I don't actually build my own group anymore. I have another business where I'm helping other high, um, uh, I'm I'm helping other agents with very large <coughs> downlines get to their next levels by bringing um, FLQAs to them. Mm -hmm. And so um, I don't actually do my own. And, and the reason why is I don't like managing organizations. I, I, I was in corporate for a long time and realized I'm really bad at it but I'm really good at sales. And so, uh, so I don't do agent attraction like your average bear anymore. <laughs> I, I just do it a little differently that works better with my skill set. And so, uh, but if you, if you spend two hours a day dialing, you will 
easily have 15 appointments on your calendar every every week. 65 to 70 percent of them will show up. A handful will reschedule, a handful of them won't. But when they don't show up, it doesn't matter to you because you're sorting through agents and you're not searching and chasing them. Right. It's, a, it's a way better mind game for sure. Well, I would I would put it out there that it's not about where, you know, agents, we talk about the low, the small percentage of agents that are obviously working their revenue share part of their business compared to the total number of agents in the company. I don't think it's about the data. But you, I, you just, I just shared. Uh, we all have Zillow. We all have access to that, and you can see exactly who the producers are if you want to target a certain uh, range of people. And there's 108,000 cities slash towns in this country, so there's plenty of places you can plug in there to get a different set of people. Um, yeah, and the only like you don't need to pay for a data source. I mean, Market View Broker is pretty cheap. It's like 150. I don't know. It's like 100, 150 bucks a month or something yeah. like that. But what it does is I can download and re-upload into my CRM Grow uh, 1,500 agents in three minutes. Yeah. So it, you, you, can, you can search better that way, but don't let not buying a data source be the thing that keeps you from dialing. When I started in real estate in 2016, I had nothing. I didn't know anybody. Yeah. I just moved to a new city. I did 9,036 deals, expires and FISBOs by Zillow, and I didn't pay them a nickel. Yeah. So it, it can be done. It's just slower. So you go slower until you have the money to be able to go faster. Right. De Dennis and Brian, did you, when, when, when you guys were first starting out, can you kind of maybe reflect back on what it looked like juggling your real estate business along with now this recruiting vertical in your business? How did that go for you guys? Yeah, Brian, you want to jump in here? He, Brian's a very structured, calendared kind of guy, way, way more than me. So he could probably reflect a little better than I can. So I was scared to death. Um, frankly, I coached Remax companies, Keller Williams companies, Century 21 companies. And I was fearful that if they got wind that I was at EXP, I'd lose all those tr training companies. Uh, so it was a limiting belief in my head, right or wrong. It held me back for about 12 months. I didn't really do anything for 12 months. Um, it was really the everything that I've built in the last, you know, in my time here has been in the last 12 months. I still, somebody in the chat asked, you know, do I do any direct response marketing? Because I'm really skilled at direct response marketing and, and using bait and lead magnets to get people to call you. And the answer is I've written some, but I've been, I've not used them. Uh, so I'm just reaching out to people who are highly influential, calling them, engaging them in the conversation. And I haven't really come out of the closet yet. Um, but as my revenue share grows and I get less, I get more comfortable with losing business, you know, right? I don't want to lose business. I'm competitive. I'm wired that way. I don't want somebody to say goodbye. And I know who I am at my core. I know that I would never, you know, uh, cannibalize a relationship. And, you know, it's people have, at companies have asked me, hey, tell me about EXP. I see that you're with EXP. I saw you on LinkedIn. You're with EXP. And I go, you know what? It's a great company, but the grass is greener where you water it. And I've been hired and contracted to coach your company to help you increase production. And that's my role. And I won't, I won't go there because there's plenty out there. Um, so I don't know if that answered your question, Sean, but uh, it's been the last year and um, I'm very structured. So I schedule EXP time in my week. I, I take blocks. Yeah you know, to work, to reach out to people, to engage people and to have time for three-way calls. So it's starting to really grow. And I'm grateful that I have a wonderful upline that is willing to support me and do calls for me and assist me in bringing people on. Yeah, I, I, I you know, I, we've got 140 people on the call today and this is a mastermind. So you guys, if you have questions, I want to give you guys the opportunity to, to speak up and, and ask questions. John, do you have another one? You've got your hand still raised there. <clears throat> but um i would no, say I'm sorry i just didn't lower it no problem no i problem. usually don't raise my hand i just jump in but i'm trying to be yeah right well that's what it is but we got a lot and of so i'll people. lower it right now sorry about that we have a lot of quiet people on the call today i guess but I'd, i would like to just say that you know i think you know lots of people are looking for the magic pill and the magic pill literally is time management i believe that if you could just manage your time 
and make sure that you have enough time. Like Diana Kokoska says, if it's not in your schedule, it doesn't exist. So if you don't put the call time in your schedule, you're never going to make that call time. Yeah. But if you put it in your schedule, don't step over it. Keep Stick to your schedule, right? Yeah. Jessica, great. Thanks for raising your hand. What do, you, what do you got? So I know you guys are talking a lot about calls and it might be because I'm Canadian, but he, like we don't do a lot of cold calling here. So I don't call like even in my real estate business, I don't call people. And I'm, uh, I've am only been in the business for a year and a half, but I've started agent attraction. Everyone I've attracted are people I don't know because I didn't know any agents. And it's all been through social media. So I'm wondering like, what strategies do you guys use other than calling? Well, Jessica, real quick, before I turn it over to Brian or, or uh, Dennis to answer your question, I would hesitate, I would, I would question, just think about what you just said. So if, if you're social media and somebody says, here, I've got a client that wants to work with you, Jessica. You have to then pick up the phone and call that person. Do you not? Yeah, I would call them. I call someone if they they know I'm going to call them. Okay. So you're <laughs> saying that you that you've you nobody in your sphere of influence you picked up the phone to call and let them know you're an agent? Um no, I didn't call people to say, hey, I'm an agent. People in your sphere of influence, you never you never did that. People in Canada don't do that. <laughs> People do that here. <laughs> it's just not as common to do cold calling. Yeah. yeah. Everyone says call everyone you know. I connect with them differently. Like I connect with people on social media. I connect with them face to face. I invite people over for dinner. And that's how I told people those things. Yeah. yeah. Got, go ahead, Brian and Dennis. What do you got to say about that? Yeah. I mean, it's just, um, again, it's just having the courage to pick up the phone and make the calls. I mean, I think you should call everybody that you know, really. You know, have have a good script. It's not going to be perfect. Like Brian said, fail forward, I think is the right word. You know, you're going to you're going to make mistakes, but you're going to sharpen your sword every time you make a mistake. That's just that's just life. Right. We you don't get ahead by not, you know, not making mistakes. So don't be afraid of picking up the phone. You know, Betty, Betty Gales gave me a good book um, years ago. I think it was like five, four, three, two, one, Betty, something like that. And it was just like you know, five, four, three, two, one, go, pick up the phone and go. Don't give yourself an option of. Yeah. I think that's like a Mel Robbins technique, right? Yeah. I mean, the mindset, when, yeah. <laughs> totally. Cause when you think about it, right. It's like, okay, I'll make the calls. Let me check my email real quick. Oh, Hey, let me text that guy before I stop making my calls before you know, you didn't make your calls. So it's just that simple. So, you know, time block, time block, your half hour, start, start with 10 minutes a day. Just, just, you know, little, little bites. Don't, don't eat the elephant all in one bite. You have to eat it bite by bite. So do 10 me, minutes and just pick up the call. Yeah. Let me offer you this, Jessica. <clears throat> what got you to where you're at will keep you where you're at. So in order to get to where you want to go, it requires change. It requires different strategies, different tactics, different tools, different techniques. So be open to the possibility of using the phone as a resource. Be open to the possibility of using the telephone when you're talking to a co-broke transaction uh, about the deal that just got delayed or the inspection problems that are going on. Be open to the possibility while you're already talking to them to go, hey, I'm curious, you're at Royal LePage. How do you like it there? What do mm -hmm. you like about it? What, you know, so in other words, as, as everybody on this call recognizes in real estate sales, you, my first year I sold 12 homes. What I did got me to 12 sales. What got me to 24, what got me to 42, what got me to 200 to 400 sales a year were different strategies, different tools, different resources. So sometimes we get locked in psychologically and we go, I'm not doing that. We don't do that here. I'm not doing that. Yeah, and that might I won't do it. I guess what I'm wondering is everything I've done is building relationships through social media and like also in-person events and stuff with agents, just connecting with people. And yeah, I like that, that part of it. So I'm, and I, I'm open to doing calls and stuff. Um, I guess I'm just wondering if there are strategies that you guys are using off the phones that are working that I can add to what already works for me. Events, put on an event in your market, Get, yeah. you know, find five top producers in your market and do a panel and put on by Jessica 
call it, you know, just the real estate mastermind put on by Jessica, where top agents in the market share with each other and collaborate and mastermind and everybody's invited. Okay. And J Jessica, the only reason I said what I said is because I guarantee there's probably, there's 140 people, there's probably 100 people that don't like making calls. <laughs> and and my, my joke to you was, is that even if you connect with somebody on social media, use social media to make that connection, but it yeah. ends up with a call. So yeah. I don't. That's how it works for me. It ends up in like a Zoom so that it's more personable right. chatting or we're like meeting if they're local. Um, I guess it's like the cold call that I'm like, mm, I'm not there yet. I could get there. I'm willing to try, but yeah. I'm like, I don't know those agents. So it's a true cold call, right? Just calling an agent. Well, they're to, in your industry though, right? Is it really yeah. that cold? I think it's cold, only cold because you're reinforcing in your mind that it's cold. So stop yeah. using the word cold call and make it a warm call because you're in the same industry with these people. Hey, I, hey, Jessica, it's Sean. We both have this thing in common. It's called real estate. I sell it in LA. You sell it in Toronto or wherever you are, right? Yeah. So we got some other folks with uh, with questions. Linda, I'm not hey, sure if Linda or Alexander hey, who was first, but. Hey, Sean, can I jump in real quick uh, for Jessica? So I'm coaching one of the largest teams in Canada right now on cold agent attraction. You do have a lot more difficulties up there doing it because you d Canada does not allow data source uh, like the United States does. Reach out to me. I've got a couple of ideas for you, but also you can get the data for agents in the United States. It, it doesn't make any difference. Um, so if you do have a question, I, I've kind of dove deep on the Canada thing with this particular team. So I, yeah. I do have some suggestions for you. You can reach okay, out yeah. to me if that, you'd that like. That would be awesome. Because that's we have just so many more cold, That's just for the cold calling here. side of it because I know your yeah. regulations up there are much different than here. Yeah, in it's crazy here. <laughs> you can, pull, you can pull, up, pull up Zillow up there. I just had a client. I have a client I coach who's in Toronto and he, yeah. he was like Zillow. I don't even know if I have that. And so he picked, pulled up Zillow <laughs> and we yeah. put in, we put in a, um, a city in, in, in and around Toronto and it came up. So, so there's definitely information there as well. I'm not sure who is next, but I'll just call Linda first. Um, hi, um, I have a question. Um, a little bit uh, quickly, my background, um, um, I came from Remax, um, where I was the number one or two agent in um, Southeastern Colorado for years. And then I went to KW uh, thinking they could help me accomplish what I'm uh, determined to accomplish at uh, EXP. And I was only there a short time before COVID. I tapped though when I was there as well. So I'm focusing on you know the icon agent, but I am so extremely interested in rev share. And I'm just, I, I'm, I know we need to focus on the one thing. So I'm thinking, do I focus on first the icon agent? And I'm going to need somebody help me with buyers, somebody else help me with listings. Or do I partly focus on that? And then I know, John, I was on a call, I believe, recently with him. Try to also get like one and a half or two hours in every day somehow and do the rev share. I just feel like I'm spread so thin. I do have a virtual assistant and I have a field assistant, but those are the two people right now that I have helping me. What would you recommend? Because I, I I have drive, I have passion. I, I have so much interest in the rev share, but I know I need to become an icon agent, but I can't figure out how to balance this out. Well, I'll let Brian and Dennis chirp, chime in. Maybe Betty even wants to respond. But I will say that uh, Gary Keller, when he wrote the book, The One Thing, it isn't just about one thing. You have many one things. It's what you're doing in that moment is your one thing. So don't get caught in that trap to think that you're supposed to be doing one thing because that's, that's not what the book says. But go ahead, Brian and Dennis and Betty, and, and maybe you guys could chime in. Yeah, I would, um, I would suggest, get, do you have a buyer's agent on your team or a seller's agent, Linda? Okay. Yeah. Sean is my coach and he's, he's my sponsor too. I just went on board the middle of September. Um, so yeah, uh, I mean, things are progressing. I think I need to be more patient. <laughs> yeah. Um, Sean, Sean can guide you. Um, I'm sure on how to do it, but you know, my, my initial 
thought on that is to is to get somebody you know like a team member right but be you know talk to sean about how to do that there's a right way and there's a wrong way brian's taught me the right way thank god over the years <laughs> um but you know for instance if i get a in you know early on i wouldn't do this but if i let's say have a three million dollar listing lead or buyer lead i don't even take those anymore really i just yeah. I pass those out and i mean i'm giving i'm walking away from you know, 50% of a three seventy five thousand dollars commission, let's say, right? And I'm willing to do that because I'm at that level now of my rev share groups large enough where if I go on a listing appointment, I feel like I'm wasting time almost. It's it's kind of a, it's a whole different mindset. Right. It's going to take a little while before you have a group that that's, that's large enough where you feel like that, but you will get to that point if you do a little focus of rev share. So I would suggest, you know, maybe get adding a team member and then just blocking out some time. Does you know, there's everybody has 30 minutes in their day. I don't care how busy somebody is to do this, right? It's just about blocking it, shutting off your phone, you know, your cell phone and just using maybe a landline to make the calls. Exactly. Uh, for the sake of time, Alexander, once you get your question, I want to try to get everybody that's raised their hand in before the hour ends. Thank you, Sean. I appreciate it. I appreciate everyone on, on the call. Great call, everybody. Um, call, uh, my question is about uh, if if an agent, if I have an opportunity to meet somebody face to face, obviously it's going to take more time as opposed to a Zoom call. Uh, from your experience, is it better to do face to face meetings uh, or would you rather, in a, for the sake of saving time, do more Zoom calls from your experience? Face to face is always better. Period. I mean, belly to belly, we call it, right? You get Brent, Brent Gove preaches this all the time. You know, when you can sit with somebody face to face, that's always better than a Zoom call, always better than sending a video, always better than text message, you know? So, yeah, yeah. If you if you have the time to sit face to face with a local realtor, do that. Appreciate it. Thank you. 100%. Awesome. You're not going to do 20 appointments a week. You might do two a week. You can find the time for face to face. If possible, it's you influence way better uh, in a personal environment than you do over the telephone or on Zoom. Absolutely, Fidel. Yeah, how you guys doing? Real quick, um, I have a goal to uh, attract sixty agents this year, and that's basically five a month. So, is there kind of a rough um, ratio? Because I'm trying to figure how many calls a day, how many calls a week. You know what I mean? And how many calls I need to make in that month to, to get five agents. And I was using a real skewed number thinking like, you know how internet leads are 100 internet leads to close one deal? Right. So I'm wondering, is there a ratio for how many calls there, to get one? There really is. It's, it's as simple as start out with five a day. So 25 conversations a week. And if you use Prado's principle 80-20 rule, you should book one appointment for every five conversations. So in that week, you'd have five appointments and an appointment is a deep dive. Either you're bringing them on a Zoom video and you're playing uh, Brent Goh's video or you're bringing them to Sean's Friday uh, presentation where Sean presents, or maybe you're having a three-way call with your upline. That's the deep dive. And so five deep dives should get you one person that joins. That's a 20% conversion. But the key is tracking your own numbers, guys. You don't want to just go based upon a, a, a pie in the sky, maybe a con uh, construct of 80, 20, if that's not really your conversion. So track your numbers daily, write down your, the number of dials, write down the number of the amount of time that you lead generated that day, write down how many conversations and how many appointments you set, and then track that stuff on a day, on a weekly, a daily basis, and then weekly. And then at the end of the month, you know exactly what your conversion rates are. And then take that math and work it backwards. Hopefully that answers your question, Fidel. Thank you much. Ronnie, Any make you the last question. Do you have a question for the group? All right, guys. Yes, I, I do. Uh, go ahead, go ahead, Ronnie. Take me a minute to get off mute on my phone. I had a comment for the woman from uh, Canada. It just reminded me of yeah. a script that I've been working on with uh, Sean. I think her name was Jennifer. Jessica, yeah. And th this is more of a script for higher producers, but it's kind of like, I is this Jennifer? Now, don't go through your mental road that's, you don't know me. And, you know, tee it up like that. So you don't need to have the internal conversation that I can't call him because I don't know. Yeah, that's great. Oh, I that's great. Hey, I, 
I've been using Market View Broker, uh, like John talked about, I just started. And so I'm starting out with people that are cappers. And I say, um, don't go through your mental world decks because you don't know me, but I'm curious. <clears throat> I'm reaching out to you because you're high level of production and I'm curious uh, what you know about EXP and um, how it increases your lead generation. Um, have you heard about it? That's great. And, thank, thank you, Ronnie. So you're using, hey, don't don't beat up your uh, yourself. You don't know me, uh, but we're both in the real estate industry and I, I, I've, I've researched you in your area and you're doing a great number of deals. You have a great number of Zillow reviews and I just want to reach out and then go right into the very direct script which if you don't have the re very direct script, Jessica, that's something you can get through it at Agent Attraction. You can go on Sean's website, iconcoaching.com. There's scripts and dialogues up in the resources section. So it, listen, I want to be respectful of everybody's time. Dennis and, and Brian, I'm not sure if we lost Brian. Uh, you still on, Brian? Brian had to bounce. Okay, he had to bounce. So Dennis, and thank you so much for pouring into the group today. Of course. This, uh, this is an amazing group. It's growing every week and we want to keep doing that. It is a mastermind. Keep doing what you're doing and appreciate your pouring into everybody. Yeah. And guys, trust me, if I can do it, you can do it. <laughs> I talk with marbles in my mouth every day. So if I can do that, you can do it. So just go then and do it. Just go do it. Just like Nike said. Pretty much. All right, guys. Well, I want to be respectful of everybody's time. Thank you for allowing me to fill in. And, and uh, Can I ask one last question? Sure. Go, go for it, Gus. It's Gustavo. Hey, uh, I've been trying to get this agent attraction. I've been, um, I wouldn't say I'm quite successful, but I did, I do lunch and learns and I've been getting about, uh, I got now five recruits uh, in the last three months. Okay. Awesome. Uh, majority when I talk to people, they, I get this biggest response, which puts me off is I'm happy where I am. I've talked to all of this EXP agents. I don't want to listen about this. That's where my biggest challenge lies is. And then I, Go completely down and I lose my mind. Well, I can tell you that I was that I was on Sean's uh, will never leave KW list. And I got calls from different brokerages. I did get calls from EXP. I don't know if Algin's still on the call, but he was he's a better friend of mine for many, many years. And he was one that called me. I had six, at least six different EXP agents that called me over the time. And the truth was, is I never actually took the time to take a look, to take a look at it. And I wish I had. So I, that's just a reflex response that you're getting from people. I believe in most cases. Mm -hmm. So uh, okay. being happy is the reason I'm calling you. That's what I would say. Look, I don't call people that are unhappy people. I, I know of you in our, in our, you know, if it's somebody local that you can say, Hey, I know of, you have a great reputation of, of, of being a happy guy in the, in our area here. If it's not somebody, you know, you, you you can't say that, but you can say, hey, Gus, you, you sound like a happy person. I don't call people that are unhappy. And then just go into the next part of, you know, let me share with you why you might consider looking at this now and ask them about their business. Go into Sean's uh, rate your current brokerage one to 10. Let's not talk about my brokerage. Let's talk about yours. Let's mm -hmm. talk about your business. Dennis, go ahead and comment. Yeah, I mean, that's that's what you want to do, right? Just the you know, I, I, I always use that, hey, let me be your second option. If you don't want to come right now, that's okay. I understand you love your brokerage. All I'm saying is if sometimes things change in your brokerage and I just want to be plan B, would that be fair? Right. They'll be like, yeah. yeah, sure. It's an easy way out, right? They'll be like, sure. Yeah, you'll be plan B. Okay, great. And that's it. And just stay in touch with them, right? Every couple months. Because I'm telling you right now, like my Florida example yesterday, the broker will piss them off eventually. They will. <laughs> So yeah. just just be just be their plan B. That's all I can say. And I would say, I like and I would say, probe a little bit. Make sure it's not a reflex no, because okay. a lot of people are just so busy doing their selling real estate, right? And they don't want to. And they're saying no to you by saying, "No, I'm happy where I'm at." The truth is, they just really had a you know a disagreement with their broker. They're just not telling you. So probe a little bit. Don't yeah, listen to that first. Get through three or four no's before you hang up the phone. That's what I tell, tell folks. Yeah. Right? So, all right, guys, we need to wrap up. I just want to be respectful of everybody's time. Thank you for coming, and we'll see you next week. Bye, guys. Yes.